let's say there are two time domain signals f1t and f2t and the laplace transform of the first signal f1t is equal to f1s and the laplace transform of the second signal f2t is equal to f2s signal f1t and signal f2t are two different signals but let's say by any chance the expression of f1s is same as the expression of f2s this means the laplace transform f1s is same as the laplace transform f2s but we know this is not possible because the laplace transform and the fourier transform are the unique properties of a time domain signal so if we have two different time domain signals then their laplace transforms and fourier transforms are also different but we are getting the same laplace transform in this case we are getting the same laplace transform because we are not defining the laplace transform completely the definition of laplace transform includes the algebraic expression along with the region of convergence and here we are not defining the region of convergence let's say for the first signal the region of convergence is sigma greater than 2 this means the laplace transform will be finite or convergent when sigma is greater than 2 sigma greater than 2 will give us a region or area in the s plane and this region is known as region of convergence now for the second signal let's say sigma is less than minus 1 so sigma less than minus 1 will give us the region of convergence and now if you see the laplace transform for the first signal and the laplace transform for the second signal you will find they are different so region of convergence is very important and we must understand what is region of convergence and what are its properties so let's start our discussion with the definition of region of convergence in short we call it roc it is the range of complex variable s we know s is a complex variable equal to sigma plus j omega for which the laplace transform is finite or convergent in the previous lectures i gave you the meaning of roc and the same thing is written here roc is the range of complex variable s this means roc is the region or area in the s plane in the s plane y axis is for j omega and x axis is for sigma so roc is the range or area in the s plane in which the laplace transform is finite or convergent and outside roc the laplace transform is infinite so this is what we mean by roc and now we will move to the properties of roc the first property says roc does not include any poles for example let's say the laplace transform fs is equal to 1 over s plus 2 now to calculate the pole we will equate s plus 2 with 0 and this will give us s is equal to minus 2 so minus 2 is the pole of the system having the transfer function 1 over s plus 2 and to understand why we are not including any poles in the roc let's include s equal to minus 2 in the roc we are having the laplace transform equal to 1 over s plus 2 let's calculate the laplace transform when s is equal to minus 2 this means f minus 2 and it is equal to 1 over minus 2 plus 2 which is 1 over 0 1 over 0 is not defined it will approach to infinity but according to the definition of roc roc is the area or range of complex variable s in which the laplace transform is finite so s is equal to minus 2 was included in roc 
and according to the definition our Laplace transform should be finite for s equal to minus 2 but we are getting infinite as the Laplace transform this means we cannot include poles in the ROC so this is all for the first property remember it and now we will move to the second property according to the second property for right sided signals for right sided signals region of convergence is right side to the rightmost pole and to understand this property we first need to understand what are right sided signals I have taken one example right sided signal here you can see the signal is having non-zero value from minus a to plus infinity so right sided signals are those signals which extend from a finite value of time to plus infinity and let's say the transfer function we are getting is having two poles the first pole is located here and the second pole is located here and out of these two poles this pole here is the rightmost pole and according to the property region of convergence is right side to the rightmost pole so region of convergence will exist on the right side of the rightmost pole so this is all about the second property now we will move to the third property and third property is similar to the second property in this case we will deal with the left sided signals for left sided signals region of convergence is left side to the leftmost pole to understand this I have taken one example in this example we are having this left sided signal you can see the left sided signal is having the non zero value from t equal to a to t equal to minus infinity so left sided signals are those signals which are non zero from t equal to some finite value to minus infinity and for these signals the ROC will exist on the left side to the leftmost pole now let's say there are two poles and this is the location of the first pole and this is the location of the second pole now according to the property we are having here whenever there is a left sided signal the region of convergence will exist on the left side of the leftmost pole so this is all about property number three and now we will move to the property number four according to this property for the absolute integrability of a signal or the stability of a system region of convergence should include imaginary axis we know in the s plane in the s plane y axis is the imaginary axis and i have taken three cases in the first case you can see the region of convergence is having the y axis this means the region of convergence is having the imaginary axis and when this happens the signal will be absolutely integrable or the system will be stable now let's move to the second case in this case also y axis is included in the region of convergence and in the third case we have region of convergence as a strip and you can see here also y axis is included in the region of convergence now let's move to the fifth property according to this property for both sided signals ROC is a strip in the S plane I have taken one example of both sided signal and whenever we have the signal like this its region of convergence is like a strip and here you can see we have two values of sigma let's say this value here is equal to sigma 1 and this value here is equal to sigma 2 so between sigma equal to sigma 1 and sigma equal to sigma 2 we have our region of convergence in the third case of the fourth property we have a strip like ROC and this implies we are having the corresponding signal double sided now we will move to the last property which is the sixth property 
for finite duration signals ROC is the entire S plane excluding S equal to 0 and or plus infinity and or minus infinity. I have taken one example of finite duration signal. Here we have a finite duration signal and for this type of signals the region of convergence is entire S plane either excluding 0 or plus infinity or minus infinity or even any other combination of 0 plus infinity and minus infinity. So this is all for the properties of ROC and the meaning of ROC. If you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.